having problems with your fruit trees, who are you going to call? Next time, call your University of Hawaii Agricultural Extension agent. For West Hawaii, that would be Virginia Easton Smith in Kainaliu. They will often eat the leaf like this in from the, from the edge. Um, but both of these would be probably caterpillar. The other thing, it could be is grasshopper, but grasshoppers would be out during the day, and since you haven't seen them, it's probably not that. And then the other thing, see that There's black? a lot of new farmers uh, every year moving into Kona, and so a lot of them don't have any farming experience, uh, might have some gardening experience, but might not. So a lot of it is um, just basic questions, which is fine. I get a lot of questions about what crop to plant. And the first thing I would need to know before I'd make a recommendation on that is where the farm is located, you know, the general soil, whether there's good drainage. Usually there is, but not always. And what the rainfall is like. I encourage people to figure out how they want to market their fruit first. We can grow so many different things here that environment is not the largest factor. It's more the marketing, I think, to be a successful grower of fruits in Hawaii. Um, I do encourage people to plant a variety of things, not to have all their eggs in one basket, as it were. It's really important to keep records on your fruit maturity, rainfall, flowering. And the reason for that is because there's so much variation. There's going to be variation from farm to farm, from season to season. Uh, there'll be differences between varieties of the same fruit. Different varieties of avocado, for instance, will mature at different times. So it is really critical to keep some records. And it doesn't have to be anything real elaborate. Um, you could have, for your avocado trees, you could have one notebook and a few pages for each variety and just keep a record of what happens each month how much rainfall you got how much fertilizer you applied and what it was when your flowering occurred whether it was a big flowering or just sporadic and then when the fruit starts to mature and probably it's also a good idea to keep your yield records in that same notebook if you ever need to apply f or wish to get crop insurance which is a great deal for farmers, you need to have some uh, yield data and records. Another way you could keep records would just be on your calendar. You can just put a little notation, fertilize today, this is what I used, this is how many pounds, and I put it on the Sharwell avocados. So that would be a very simple way to keep, keep your notes. You just keep those calendars year to year and you can refer back to them. For any fruit crop that you're going to harvest, I would advise picking some fruit when you think it's starting to get ready and doing a taste test. If it's something like avocado or mango that's going to ripen after you pick it, then you need to pick several fruits, um, let them ripen a few days, maybe cut one open, check how it's doing, you know, see how the oil content is, if it's creamy, buttery, or if it's still watery. Um, so you need to have several fruits so that you can look at them over several days and then if you find that those are in fact mature not just ripening but they're actually mature then you know that you can pick the fruit that are of that size or larger. The most common question I get about harvesting fruit is when to pick mangoes and what I tell people is that part of it is just experience you have to know your plants, know your variety, pick some at different stages and test them and see if they're ready. And over time you will learn how to do it. There are some indicators such as um, the shoulders broadening, the fruit filling out, some color break, uh, maybe changes in the stem. But I think the best way to know is by experience. When you're harvesting mango, it's a good idea to start at the bottom part of the tree and work your way up because the sap will drip down on the lower fruits. So you can, you can reduce that by starting at the bottom. Okay, when I go on a farm visit, uh, which is part of my job as an extension agent, um, the farmer and I will walk around the farm. If they're having any problems with their trees, they'll show me that and I will 
try to figure out what the problem is. I might be able to tell them right then what the problem is and what the recommendation is to deal with it. Or we might need to take some samples and send them into our lab for a small fee. And then when we get the results from the lab report, then we can proceed with the recommendation to manage the problem. Uh, growers might have questions about fertilizer, nutrient deficiencies, questions on how to prune certain trees. Um, so we just walk through the farm and address whatever issues they have. The successful farmers also are looking at where and how they're going to sell their fruit. Before they even plant it, they, they at least have some idea of where they're going to sell it. If it's going to be to a wholesaler, directly to a grocery store, directly to consumers. That's very important for, to know starting out.